Hello folks, welcome to Quaff TV. I'm Justin, this is Andre. Hello. You may remember him from such TV commercials as Coca-Cola with Kyle Minogue. I just thought I'd get it out there. Oh, <laughs> how long has it been since we've done a Quaff TV episode? I'm sick of being God, asked. I recognise this guy. Where's he from? Kyle Minogue, Coke, about 1980 five something. Five years and you never subject me to this kind of... I know, I thought it was about time. Torture. I told Myra I was going to do it. Oh, <laughs> anyway, so back to the more important point. I okay. would like to draw your attention to today's real theme of Quaff TV, which is not only Hunter Simeon, and we've done a bit of that, haven't we? Yeah, we love Hunter Simeon. We yeah. love it. There's no surprise. Today we thought in honour, because what is today, Justin? Semsational, which is a tweet up, uh, hashtag Semsational. Um, it's the launch event of what is called the Hunter Valley Uncorked Festival 2011. Tonight at um, 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time till about 8.30, mm. literally 16 or so um, of the best Hunter Valley winemakers. Bruce Tyrrell's going to be online on Twitter. Um, Liz Jackson, I believe, a whole lot of really the best, a real lineup. They're all going to be tweeting about Hunter Simeon, and we decided to grab the new releases from a good mate of mine who will also be tweeting his beer swilling, cigarette smoking ass off tonight. And that is Mr. Andrew Thomas, otherwise known as Tomo, owner of Thomas Wines. Yes, <laughs> that, that's what we okay. <laughs> need. <laughs> <laughs> These are new releases. This yeah. is 2011. Um, we've got the Braymore, which is that one. We've got the OC, and then well, the single vineyards, and then this Six Degrees, which is a slightly sweeter style. A little sweetie. And look, this is his Semillon range. Um, Thomas Wines and Semillon, you don't get much better. He has stormed on the scene. Um, what, sort of After over the last decade? 20 years with Tyrrells and all that goes. <laughs> and since he's done it, he it, it's kind of been, you know, Tyrrells that one, Thomas Braymore, um, Mount Pleasant, Lovedale. Really, the, the competing for the trophy in Best Semi On In Show and at all the wine shows. This is, this is the upper, this is as good as it gets in the world. Yeah. If you consider that Australia, hands down, makes the best, uh, well, Hunter Valley, hands down, makes the best Semi On in the world. Um, and I think that's universally agreed. It's not just uh, we Australians that think that. And um, and he's the duck's nuts of the hunter. And there's a few of them making great wines. He's right up there. And this is his Bremor 2011. It's sort of his top wine, but it's also he's, he's built to age one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're gonna find when you get it in your mouth, it's gonna be zippy and fresh, and you know, it's last 20 years. It gets friendlier as it goes down. Zippy and fresh. Zippy and fresh. You do it. And we've tasted, uh, we've not tasted these 2011, um, well, actually have, but just recently. Um, but, uh, yeah, brand new and... And you get all this kind of lime and bubble gummy thing I get going and a lot of young Hunter Sam's, but it's like really floral and tight, you can tell, it's just... That so is pretty is. much Hunter Sam persona. Yeah, young, and look, we've, we've sprouted. Uh, plenty about Hunter Semillon, and it's obviously when it's young, it's like just lemon juice and really tight and acidic and refreshing and, and blows your mind. Um, and then when, as it gets older, it gets these honey notes and sort of straw hay, toasty, buttery. And it almost becomes, it, it's, it seems like it's been put in oak as it ages. It's, it's one of the most fascinating and wonderful wines you can get your hands on. You get it, you, you don't, you cannot believe where it's gone over time. It's just one of those wines that would blow your mind. You've got to get into it. If you haven't got into it yet, get the hell into it. Like a good Riesling, and I'd say even tenfold. Get yep. a good semi on, a good year that can age. And this, it's pretty, um, it's really explodes. And this is a quality of the brain wine, I think all the time. Explodes with flavor, explodes with that juicy citrus zing. It's wow. And, um, and this is exactly that, isn't it? It's absolutely cracking one. It's really minerally. And it, yeah, being young, like really, it's got a cleanliness about it. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's, like, it's like ice. It's kind of really, you know what I mean? It's pure. Oh, so it's got a purity. Like, what do you mean, smoking? <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. No, 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 no. Oh, it's clean, <laughs> pure, Tasmanian no, it's, um, water. Yeah, it, it, exactly pure. like that. It's like yeah. fresh spring in winter, like a mountain mm. spring. It's got that real purity. And um, yeah, that's what I agree with. You. Quite perfumey. And you're not going to do much better as a, as a young Hunter Sam. This is at its pinnacle. Yep. It's delicious. So that is the Braymore, named after the Braymore Vineyard from which it comes, single vineyard wine. 28 bucks. 
Duck's nuts. I'm trying to send me on those And to say. this one I hadn't actually tried for a while, and this vintage obviously I haven't, but this is the OC. Thomas OC Semyon. Now, tell me about this, Andre. You know more than I do. OC is just, look, it's um, named after Oakey Creek uh, Road, which the vineyard is on. Um, I, uh, I made up some, so you some other know. words for it. <laughs> <laughs> it, no, it is Oakey Creek Vineyard. But, uh, you know, well, I think you should come up with a, a better thing. Tom is a, quite a character, and I dare say he's got a couple of little analogies for, for what the OC stands yeah. for. Off the charts might be a polite one. Yep. Um, I'm going to let you go <laughs> your twisted little minds uh, to that task. And I think the, the style, it's made to be an earlier drink. Because, I mean, as a hunter nut, you can, the brain more you go, oh, that's really good. Like, it's really, really good. But as an uninitiated uh, semi on drinker, you might go, oh, anyway, I mean, that, that in 10 years is almost a crime to drink it now. Yeah. Because that would be one of those wines that just be... Very, very special. Whereas, and you know, that's that's picked a bit earlier. It's like 10 point something percent, I reckon. Oh, actually, 11? Dustin doesn't really know what he's talking about. Yeah, uh, 11.5. <laughs> this, will be, this will be picked later, hopefully. 12.2. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, mass, <laughs> massive difference in, <laughs> in the bow, but, but it's definitely a riper start. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. You getting my point now? I, you I, getting my point? What he's trying to say is it's, <laughs> it's, it's made, I believe, to drink now. A friendlier start. More approachable, less acidity. Mm. It's still pretty zingy, but mm. sort of more fleshy, more ripeness in the fruit. Um, yeah, and there's only one time that you'd say that's quite nice and rounded. It is after having. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely right. <laughs> you don't sit down with a real lunch, I don't know if it's a real lunch, and yeah. then try this and go, oh yeah, it's nice and ripe. And no, no, you no. go, oh my god, it's like a cat's bun. But yeah. it's. Um, after that, it's like really good. Cool, it is nice. made riper and. and, and Definitely now. So they're easy to drink. Mm. And again, look, it's just being true to what the vineyard's giving him as well, and a little bit of um, later picking. Tom I once said an interesting thing to us, and I don't know if he's giving away trade secrets, but he said what he does with Semyon is he he picks a little bit of it earlier than he than he than he, than, than when it's peaking, and picks the bulk of it when it's peaking in, in flavour ripeness and in you know the seed ripeness etc. And then he picks a little bit later. And he uses the early and the late pick juice, press, whatever you, to, um, to balance out the wine, depending on how it sort of shapes up mm. as it goes. I don't remember that conversation. It must have been... It's a private, <laughs> private conversation. Me and Tom. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, no. But, um, yeah, I, I dare say there's probably a few people who do that, but a uh, really clever little thing, because um, that way, that's how he sort of, I guess, works with vintage variation. And the Hunter Valley is a bitch of a place to grow wine, so you Absolutely probably know that. It's yeah. not a bad tactic. Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, the Hunter Semi, it's worth, it's worth all the pain to get wines of this. So look, oysters, fresh seafood, a lot of whites claim to go great with it, a lot of whites do. Hard to beat this with natural oysters. Oh, Hard yeah. to beat this with a really lightly grilled flounder. You know, really, when you get really good fresh seafood, yet it's so fresh you don't actually want to do too much to it. Like a bit of white flesh salmon. Kind or, of delicate flavours. Yeah, yeah, and, and this is just bang on with it. Bang yeah. on. It's a delicate wine. It's really elegant. It's, um, it, it's, it's, it's quite exquisite. This is this. what we'd like to see a bit more of. Actually. Six degrees semi-on. This has got some residual sugar in it, just a little bit of a sweeter style, and I tell you what, it is so bloody approachable and easy to drink. You see it a bit with Riesling, don't you? Yeah. Um, you know, especially in overseas Riesling, like in Mosul in Germany and even Alsace, they're making, particularly from Mosul, wines with degrees of residual sugar in them, and, um, and when it's done right, you achieve this amazing balance between the zingy citrus acid, you know, and the, 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 Sugar that is left in there, and it, you get this perfect sweet and sour balance. When it's done wrong, it tastes like a wine with some added sugar. Yeah, and it's done wrong a lot um, in this country. Less, more now. I think you're starting to see some reasons to do it right. I think this works really well with Simeon, and I think it's a yeah. chance. Always astounds me. I reckon half the wine drinking population asks for sweet wines, and about two percent or less of the country makes them. Brown brothers sit there chuckling their asses off, just going. We supply, we sell so much wine to all these people that we're, we're so much in the wine industry is going, I'd make a dry wine. Um, that everyone, or half the population is asking for sweet wine. And I think, why are we fighting it? If people want it and enjoy it, why are we fighting it? 
I just want to see where you were going to go with that and how many people you're going to offend on the way. <laughs> but anyway, this was, and Andrew, uh, Tom actually did this early on and kind of stood out and with his marketing went, this, I'm going to put it out there. Like he was, he was absolutely courageous and said, this is what I'm going to be doing. And it works. And you know, you're talking about the balance of the sweetness and the acidity. That, and it's still racy. I mean, it's, it's got the sweetness, but it's still racy in the mouth, which is really exciting. It's good wine. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's good wine. It's made, I reckon I've seen it at Salvador. You know, people coming into Salvador at the small wine maker center, I believe it's at. They'd be tasting the wines and walk away with one of those and four of those. Yeah. You know, just... It's, we can, there's no need to be snobby about sweet wines. Indeed, you know, it's, it's not a mark of anything cheap or a mark of anything, it's, it's just something. And that on a Sunday afternoon in the sun, it's like 9.5%, yep, 9.3% alcohol. You checked after I made that thing. Smash a couple of them, no, no, I checked last night when I did the deal right. <laughs> Smash a couple of those on a Sunday afternoon and See. still be able to walk to the barbecue. Perfect wine. Well, that's exactly right, isn't it? You let me walk into that other thing. Still knowing, knowing you're not going no, to watch this car crash. I only check this one. I only check this one. <laughs> anyway, getting to it. Uh, sensational tweet. I mean, there's three cracking wines. Tomo, you're a legend. You, you we do keep love the you, mark mate. every year. Keep those samples coming. Yep. <laughs> we, you only send us one of each. So. <laughs> um, but seriously, people, try them. He, he is... Hunter Semyon, in my mind, the new generation of it. And, and he's part of a wave, aren't yeah, they? And there's, yeah. there's a great wave of young winemakers. They're reprobates, but they're making great booze. Yeah, exactly. And um, if you want to get involved in Tweet Up Tonight... Oh, yes. um, we'll be tweeting. Australian East Seven be, Time, be 7 p.m. The hashtag is Sensational, so S-E-M, Sensational, Ational. Um, and it will Why be... Sensational. Sensational. Semi on sensational. Are you serious? <laughs> no, I, I was like, are you? No, really? No. no I'm going to take this. No. <laughs> anyway, sensational. Yeah, sensational. Get involved. <laughs> it's the kickoff of the Hunter Valley Uncorked Festival 2011. Thought which I'd is the start it. of awesome, great things. Yes. They're, everyone's getting involved. The whole, it's a celebration <laughs> of the Hunter, and tonight is a celebration of Hunter Semi on, and well, they deserve to be celebrated, which we shall proceed to do. Um, so thank you for tuning in and jump on Twitter and crack a semi on, rush to the shops and buy one if you're only watching this right now. And we better go because we need to get a <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Cheers guys. Cheers mate. Cheers.